Okay, so let's try something that is a little more applied, all right? Um, it's not really applied, but uh, I mean, it's something that we can give a little more of a physical interpretation to than just throwing up, throwing some basic operations saying, here, let's practice. Um, so what I want to do is I want to um, have a stick, right? Uh, with um, some endpoints. And I, what I'm going to do is, with those endpoints, I'm going to find. Um, I'm going to want to find. Uh, what should I find? Find the middle half of the stick. I want to describe where the middle half of the stick is. And this is something we can do with our basic vector operations. So we've got a. We've got a stick. Um, I'm going to plot a um, conceptual um, conceptual view here, right? So I've got a um, stick over here, right? And that stick has two endpoints, uh, P1. Let's call that one P1 and P2, okay? And I want to find the middle half of the stick, so um, from here to here, something like that, right? Um, maybe not exactly there, but s somewhere in there, right? So I want to cut off like a quarter here and a quarter there and leave a quarter there and leave a quarter there, right? So I, so I just want to know where, th where the, um, where the boundary is for this middle part. Um, so these two points are described by vectors, right, from the origin y x and um, so I've got two of these vectors that don't look like this right so this is just conceptual right this is just this is just to let us um, play around with this so we can figure out what we're going to do uh, with these two points which are minus three meters in the x direction zero meters in the y direction and one meter in the z direction so, and the other one's set minus seven meters in the x direction, eight meters in the y direction, and five meters in the z direction. Obviously, that does not correspond to this. This is, um, this is obviously completely conceptual. There's nothing, um, there's nothing when you look at it that looks at all like this. So, but we, we'll be able to use this, right? We'll be able to use the ideas from this to tell us what do we want to do. So we want to find the middle half of the stick, um, and we'll do that by finding these um, two points, Q1 and Q2, um, which would be the boundaries of that middle, just like P1 and P2 are the boundaries of this thing. Um, so to do that, we need a strategy, right? How are we going to do this? Well, first of all, I mean, we've got a middle of, a st of the stick, right? So this vector here, M, well, well I'll put M over here because I know what's coming. So I'll just say M here, that's the midpoint of the stick, okay? And um, if we go halfway between here and halfway over here, right, on each either side, um, then the, these Q1, this Q1 and Q2, uh, which break this thing into quarters, that's um, going to be, those are going to be the vectors that define that end, the endpoints of that stick. So the middle half of the stick is that part, okay? Um, so what we have to do is we have to have this and then have it again over here and have it again over here, and this distance will be, uh, and this will be our, um, our middle half of the stick. Sounds good to me, right? Sounds good to you, I'm sure. Um, so to do this, I guess first we have to find the midpoint. And then after we find the midpoint, um, then we'll have to find the quarter points. Okay, and when we have those, then we can um, think about what to do. I think what I'll, I think for this one, I'll try to do some checking, so so we can logically see if we actually got the um, process right by checking the answer. Just thinking of, thinking about it, doing some more math, and checking to see if all of the properties of um, Q1 and Q2 are what we'd say they should be 
um, if we had a piece of this stick that's just in the middle, right? Um, so I'm going to find that midpoint, and the midpoint is just the average of the two points. Um, I think they have a more complicated um, explanation or a more complicated uh, description in your uh, in your book, but I mean this is all it is. It's just you add this to that and divide by two. The average position, bam, right there in the center. Um, so let's see what happens here. So we have um, one half times minus three meters, zero meters, one meter, plus minus seven meters, eight meters, five meters, okay. And that all equals one half times minus three, minus seven, that's minus ten meters. Uh, zero plus eight, that's eight meters, and one plus five, that's six meters. Again, we're adding component by component. I guess I didn't need the double brackets, but <laughs> I'm, fe I'm, I'm feeling generous today. I'm going to give away some extra brackets. Um, here we go. We have a minus five, right? So minus ten over, my, over two, that's minus five. Then 8 over 2 is 4 meters, and 6 over 2 is 3 meters. Okay, so that's our midpoint, right in between um, these two points. Well, these two points. All right, so the quarter points, or then the midpoints, um, in Q1's case, right, it should be P1 and M, halfway between P1 and M. So it's the average of those two, right? Um, so now we go through and we do the entire process again. Uh, minus 3 meters, 0 meters, 1 meter, plus um, minus 5 meters, 4 meters, 3 meters, right? Uh, which means we have half of minus 3 meters plus minus 5 meters, so we have minus 8 meters. We have 0 meters plus 4 meters which is 4 meters, and 1 meter plus 3 meters, which is 4 meters, which is equal to um, minus 4 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters. Pretty good, not bad, right? And we'll do it again. Hey, we're on a roll. Let's not mess anything up. So we add M to P2 this time, the midpoint to the um, other endpoint of the full stick, um, and so we start off by uh, substituting um, the midpoint, minus 5 meters, 4 meters, 3 meters, and keeping the um, endpoint, minus 7 meters, 8 meters, 5 meters, and we add them all up. Minus 5, minus 7, that's minus 12 meters, 4, 8. 12 meters, 3, 5, 8 meters, minus 6 meters, 6 meters, 4 meters. Um, and so there we have another midpoint. It's a wonderful looking one too. I, I mean, I, I like it very much. I think it's um, something fun. So that actually answers the question. We got this guy, we got that guy. Um, that's more than enough. So the question is, is, um, can we check it? Right? It's always good to check if we can, if we can. Um, and let's see, what sort of properties should our stick have? Well, let's take a look at it again. I'm sorry. Let's take a look at it. Well, first of all, it's in the same direction, and it has half the magnitude, right? So that's one thing we, we have to say. It, you know, it's still pointed this way, but it has half the magnitude. So if we, if we were to find the um, difference between Q1 and Q2, it should be a scalar multiple of, um, it, or it should be one, exactly one half distance between P1 and P2. So um, the first thing is to check. Um, so we want to compare. Um, the difference in the P's, 
with um, the difference in the Q's. As, as long as it's a scalar multiple, so the, um, so the uh, difference in the magnitudes of these two things are, is 2, right? We want delta P over delta Q to equal 2. If that's true, then we're good to go if, you know, um, our, uh, our direction at least is the same. Um, but another thing is, is if this is really um, the mid, if this is really the middle half, not only will it be directed the same way, not only will it have half the magnitude, it will also sit right in the middle. So its midpoint will be the same midpoint as, um, as for the original stick. Okay, so that's our second check. Um, our second check is um, they should have the same midpoint. And if we have both of those, then we know we have the middle half of that stick, rather than um, you know something of the same length, some in some strange position, um, you know the front half of the stick, the back half of the stick. We want that middle half of the stick. Um, so let's let's check it out. Let's see what happens. Um, let's see. So let's define some vector l, which will be this delta p. Uh, well, let's not define define delta p as l. Let's define delta p as delta p, which will be p1 minus p2. Um, so p1 minus p2 is 3 meters, 0 meters, 1 meter minus, minus 7 meters, 8 meters, 5 meters. Okay. Um, so that, in that case, that is um, minus 3 plus 7 is 4 meters, 0 minus 8 is minus 8 meters, and 1 minus 5 is minus 4 meters, I believe. So that's our delta P, our delta Q, which is equal to Q minus um, Q1 minus Q2 is equal to, um, let's see what we had here. We had uh, minus 4 meters, um, 8 meters, no, 2 meters, excuse me, 2 meters, minus, um, minus 6 meters, 6 meters, 4 meters. Okay, um, and when we actually carry that out, minus 4 plus 6 is 2 meters. Um, 2 minus 6 is minus 4 meters. 2 minus 4 is minus 2 meters. That looks like we're right. Um, let's see, what can we do to figure that out? Well, let's see. We've got a common factor here, which is 4, 1 minus 2, 4 meters times... Um, 4 meters times 1 minus 2 and minus 1. And here we have 2 meters, common factor of 2, and we have 1 minus 2 minus 1. And 4 over 2 is 2. So we're okay. Check. How good is that, right? So we know we've got the right direction and we've got the right magnitude. Now all we care about is, is it in the right place, right? Um, it should obviously be because we did all the math and we did it right because we're amazing. And, um, and so let's just check with writing a second midpoint M, um, this time between Q1 and Q2. So now we have to average um, minus 4 meters, 2 meters, and 2 meters with... Um, Minus six meters, six meters, and four meters. Okay, so we use these two just in a different operation. And what do we get? Oh, isn't this exciting? It's suspenseful. You know what Alfred Hitchcock said about suspense, right? Suspense is knowing what is coming.
but not knowing when. Okay, so um, here we are. We have minus 4 minus 6, so that's one half of uh, minus 10 meters. 4 and 6, 8 meters. 2 and 4, 6 meters. And so half of this is um, minus 5 meters. Half of that is 4 meters. Half of that is 3 meters. And so M prime is exactly M, which is exactly what we want, right? Having the same midpoint is M prime equals M. And there we go. It's done. It's exactly what we wanted to do. So this was a pretty good looking problem. I like I liked it much more than most of the ones that, you know, I see early on in these uh, math texts. Um, because it's got something real there. I mean, you really want to think about geometry like this. You'll notice in the previous problem set there were a couple dealing with the geometry as well. If you can really get a good grasp on this geometry, it's going to make life so much easier for you when you're in um, when you're in your advanced physics classes, when you're at engineering school, when you're in graduate school. Because if you can actually start to see things, see how the mathematics relates to the geometry, um, you're going to be able to do a lot of powerful mathematical um, things that will save you from a lot of difficult conceptual thought, um, which is how most people get through um, engineering school and graduate school is uh, learn a few really, really useful tricks. And I'm telling you right now, being able to take vectors and turn them into geometry Geometry is a really, really, really useful trick for dynamics, for engineering, uh, or for elect electrodynamics. Yeah, and if you have um, engineering physics classes or something like that in your future, there, I mean, it just makes everything so much easier. So, um, I guess it's been really nice showing this to you, and I hope that you will... Uh, Keep on, keep on looking at these and um, maybe give me some feedback about how, uh, how I can make these a little bit better. Um, that doesn't involve me buying things, right? Uh, like microphones or cool equipment or anything like that. Or computers that are less than 10 years old. Um, so I'll talk to you a little later. Bye now.